more germs, researchers are employing tiny secret agents. You might want to know if that's being produced in your area. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Some gardeners judge their success by how well they've waged war against the hordes of bugs that invade their flower beds. Not Karen Kester. She grows her garden hoping that the bugs will come. She's an entomologist, an insect specialist. The flowers she likes best are the ones that attract the most insects. Insects cover a lot of ground, feeding, pollinating, and brushing up against things. In the process, they pick up samples of their surroundings everywhere they go. Well, right now we're in a city, and um, even in a city like this, there are insects everywhere, and they're out, and they're collecting information about the environment. So by collecting the insects, I'm, I'm using them as sort of sentinels, you know, as indicators of what's going on in the environment. Enter the Department of Defense. If troops heading into battle can get advance warning that biological weapons are present, they can take precautions. Insects can provide that information. Karen retrieves insects from traps in many different locations, then it's into the lab for analysis. But you can't tell whether that's anthracis or megatherium no. or which one, but it just is endospores. We just know it's higher than the right. Karen and her colleagues figure out what kind of microscopic organisms the insects have picked up using a spectrometer. They mush up the bugs and mix them with tracer material designed to light up when it finds a particular genetic sequence. Then they analyze the light to see what they have. In a battlefield situation, checking an insect sample can quickly warn soldiers there are deadly germs in the area. This would be a first alert. It would provide you uh, a signature above the background and... The spectrometer may be able to identify a dangerous bacterium like anthrax, but it cannot tell which of the 20 strains of anthrax it is. For that, you have to analyze the genes. Bonnie Brown is working on this aspect of the technology. This one that we ran uh, turned out pretty messy. It's pretty bad. So we had to, awful. <laughs> so we had to rerun it, and okay. this is what we got. That's fine. And we ran this one through Gene Bank, mm -hmm. and it matched up with the uh, expected bacillus. Okay, so we got the strain that they thought they had downstairs. That's right, right, exactly. Identifying the germs doesn't take long. She uses enzymes called primers that can snip out and copy specific bits of a DNA strand. These particular enzymes look for stretches of DNA that occur in deadly bacteria. You could have uh, wasp DNA, bacillus DNA, uh, pseudomonas DNA, some fungus DNA, all kinds of DNA there. And the primers that we select are specific for that organism. So only the DNA of that kind of organism will be amplified. All the other DNA is still there and we could use it at a later date. Using insects to monitor dangerous biological agents is a work in progress, but there's already talk about applications on the home front. The research team is building a database of insects living in cities, suburbs, and out in the country. They record what the bugs eat, how far they fly, and how they behave. With that information, they have a mob of little sick-legged probes scouting the environment. They can identify particular germs and chart their spread. The biological warfare problem is not just in, in a war situation. There, there's some, some concern that in, in an urban area that it's something that would be released. So if you're living in New York City or our model cities, Richmond, Virginia, you, you might want to know if that's being produced in your area. Another way to monitor our world, bugging the environment. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television, with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. 
Special thanks to member institutions of the Series Advisory Board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.